So I keep getting asked on Instagram or Facebook questions about my carving desk, my carving space, what it looks like and how I'm doing things in this, or even like how I'm recording stuff and what that looks like. So I'm going to take a moment and show you kind of what all I got going on here. So bear with me. This is going to be a process where I kind of learn how to do what it is. I'm going to try to show you what I do. Uh, the carving desk I made probably six, seven months ago. I can't remember exactly. Uh, it's on Facebook, the post. I made it in my garage. Uh, it's a 48 inch by 36 inch carving space. And so I have a 48 inch by 36 inch carving mat that fills the entire thing. And I made the desk to match that size carving mat or that size craft mat. So I could slide it in there and go edge to edge all the way across and all the way, all the way back. Now that's a very deep desk, 36 inches. And that gives me a lot of space for storage in the back. But, uh, Actually, why don't I go ahead and show you the carving space and then we can uh, talk about while I'm doing that over here to the front. All right, so this is where I film YouTube videos, right? You can see the colored light in the background for a little ambient light. I've got a, a kicker light there to put a little light on my shoulders and then this light here to put a little light at the front of my, front on my face and whatnot. And then I got a light down here I use as well. I usually set up on the desk here to provide more light on the front facing section. But uh, right now, <clears throat> here you can see I've got a Samsung Galaxy Tab uh, tablet here and that mirrors what is being shown on my phone that I'm using to record. And I got a little mount right here that pivots and that mount allows me to change where the video is and bring it down and adjust it so that I can use it to film my carving space. Now, some folks say, man, your carving area is always clean and organized. Sure, it is here, but <laughs> it's not so much over there. I, I've got various things over here. I've got extra pens and ink pens and all kinds of various paraphernalia for carving, some cutouts, and it's, uh, it's quite a mess. Now I'm going to change the lighting in here so I can get a better view of this area. This is a different view here with the, the lighting set differently. I have got, like I said, 48 inch across, 36 inches deep for a carving desk. This section here is built up a raised kind of platform for the computer monitor to sit on and for various carvings and whatnot that I can set across there. I've got a little bit of a lip here in the front and up underneath there is an LED light to light up everything that's going on under, underneath the, the carving desk when I'm carving and whatnot. But I also have this here light that I can change focus on and adjust out or further in as needed. I can bring this arm down here and record with the phone right like so. And that's probably close to the view you're familiar with. So that's how I'm doing that being able to look at the phone and carve at the same time. And I get all this stuff going on over here outside of the carving area you don't normally see. So I've got all my various paint brushes, styluses sitting there. Uh, this is some dirty water. I've been doing a lot of painting this morning, getting ready for a fall festival, which is what these carvings are for. And uh, in the back is some spare wood, some basswood eggs, and a bunch of paint sticks and whatnot that I use. Now, when I step a little bit further back here, you'll be able to see more about what I going on, what I got going on here. So up here, I've got a bunch of various rough outs and cutouts that I've gotten and collected that I can have set aside for when I where I want to use them. I got all kinds of that. I got extra storage in here for things I need, and most of this is all carving stuff. So like down here, I've got carving booklets. I've got my buffing and stropping wheel, and I got this light here that lets me get on that real easy. I can just pivot over here and strop quickly and easily to get myself back to sharpening condition. Pipe paraphernalia right here, and then more sections of spare wood of varying sizes. So I've got I've got some spare wood in smaller sizes, spare wood in larger sizes. Down here I've got waxes and oils, Howard's feeding wax, wood glue, and a drill gun. And uh, for the Etsy shop, I have right here. Uh, envelopes for mailing. I got a, a, a basket full of tools here, along with a power strip for powering everything that's over here and charging cables, whatnot. Um, that orange light here for behind the camera. 
down here in the bottom I've got the computer, uh, hair dryer, bag of M&Ms because you never know when you need M&Ms. And that's the basics of the carving desk. Um, up here on top, I've got spare paint trays, uh, the stickers, which you can find on my Etsy shop. Hey, if you want to help the channel out and get something in return, you can head over to Etsy and get one of these carving stickers of different varieties. You can put one on your water bottle, your tool tote, your carving space, wherever you want to put a sticker at. If you want to help out, you can. If you don't want to help out, don't even worry about it. <laughs> this is my carving sticker. That one's funny to me. At any rate, thanks so much. If you'd like to get a sticker, spare carvings, wallet, yada yada. And then if I step back a little bit further, now I'm going to take you out to my shop. Take a show to the garage, and this is where I'd, uh, that's where I used to carve, but I don't carve as much anymore. Alexa, lights on. Alexa, garage on. There we go. So, okay. my garage. It is a hot mess. But I do have a bandsaw. Nothing big, just a simple little one. This is a, is a nine inch steel bandsaw, which allows me to get a lot of the cutting that I do for uh, rough outs and cutouts done. And uh, over here, I've got, this is my original carving space right there. I was out here all the time before. But the problem with carving outside is that whenever I was out here, I wasn't spending time with the family. And I wasn't getting to see them as often as I wanted to. And I was spending a lot of time just kind of by myself. And that made my kids sad. It made my wife sad. So I built that carving desk. And I built it out here in this garage on a couple of sawhorses right there. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot better for me. But this is where I keep all my spare wood down here. And recently I got some larger stuff. So this is a 4x4x2 four by four by inch basswood as well as three by three inch basswood that I'm gonna be playing around with. I'm not gonna do YouTube videos with that. I'm gonna stick with the two by twos mostly for the YouTube videos and the inch and a half by inch and a half probably. So that's what I'll be sticking with for the YouTube videos. But now you know, right? So that's the garage. Now, a lot of people ask about that, uh, that, that uh, antiquing solution that I use. And I've got that right here in this bucket. So inside of this is that antiquing solution right there. Nasty stuff. It is boiled linseed oil, um, mineral spirits, and raw umber paint, oil-based paint, all mixed in and sitting in here. And all of my carvings, everything is painted at least. Every painted carving I get goes through this solution and uh, it is fantastic it is nasty and disgusting looking and honestly I kind of like the smell of BLO anymore so it smells good to me but it looks nasty and disgusting and boiled linseed oil though can be a fire hazard the rags that you use with it if they're crumpled up can wind up uh, <clears throat> They can wind up catching fire, um, especially if they're crumpled up in a ball or something like that. You know, they'll, they'll heat up and they'll catch fire. So what I do with that is all the rags that I use for this is they're usually paper, paper rags, paper towels, like shop towels, you know. I'll take those and immediately take them outside, do an old barbecue pit I have and shove them in there. And I've been doing that for probably close to a year now. And so far, only one time have they caught fire, but they did catch fire. So the, the shop, the shop towels, like they're just paper towels, right? And I, and I bone, bunch them up, bundle them up, shove them inside that thing. And they caught fire, obviously it's inside of a fire pit, inside of a barbecue pit. So it didn't cause a problem. And I didn't even know they had caught fire. So I went out there like a week later to put more in there. And I noticed that they were all burnt up. And I was like, wow, they really did catch fire. So a good rule of thumb is uh, make sure you store that stuff outside. Don't have it inside if you're going to be, uh, you know, using DLO. The, the, the material itself, I got inside this tub with a lid so it can be sealed up and not have an issue. It's the towels that have been used or the paper towels, you know? So keep that in mind as uh, something to think about when you're doing all this stuff in the house, right? So Before I go inside, real quick, I want to show you uh, some of the original carvings I have out here. Some of the first stuff that I did right here, like this stupid little thing. The first night I ever attempted was this guy out of pine. And uh, yeah, there's a Viking I had attempted a long while ago. 
silly carvings that were terrible, terrible carvings. At the time, I thought they were so much better than they were, but you know, you, you spend time improving stuff. And I'm not gonna get rid of them because they, they show me how far I've come, like where I was at and what I've done since then. And it's just, yeah. Don't get rid of your old carvings. Save them. And that's all I got for you today. So uh, <clears throat> thank you for sticking with me. Thank you for uh, watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, have a good week, folks. I, and don't forget to click these links that you see popping up on the screen. Watch those videos. They're very, very educational. You need them.